I've been getting requests for a long time to show how I change my insulin site and my CGM. And today, they both need to be changed in the same day, which doesn't really ever happen. So I figured, why not just show everybody now? So, this is all that is needed to um, make that possible. Okay, this is what's needed just for the site change plus the insulin pump. Okay, so first I have to take my old site out. And this site has a stainless steel needle in it that's about mm, that big. So I'm a little more careful when I'm taking my site out than whenever I take my CGM out. I'm hanging on by a thread. Yesterday, the connector and the detacher started coming off. And I knew that I only had one more day to go. And I didn't want to waste the site. And I didn't want to waste the insulin. So I just kind of attached it on with some extra adhesive um, to make it last longer. So I'm just kind of lifting up around all the edges. And then I'm just going to pull it directly out since there's a needle in it. And we're just going to pull out. And now my tummy's clean. So this is the needle that's always in me. This needle never comes out. You can see there's a little insulin at the end of it. Um, this needle never comes out. It is always in me. And then this is the attacher and the detacher. And then I have this hooked up. So I'm going to get a new site set up. First we have the syringe, the lure lock syringe with the plunger. And then we have the 26 gauge needle that connects to the lure lock. And we will open both of those up. Like that. And then they have a little twist on it. And I will just put those in there and then twist it and it locks the needle in place. And then this is a brand new box of insulin and it has a little perforation. I don't know if you can see that. And you just tear the perforation. And then it has a little lid so it's reclosable later. And then it always comes with some instructions and some info about the insulin in case you needed to know. And then a brand new one will always have this cap on it and you can't reuse the cap, but you just flick the cap off and then you have your um, sponge spot there to put your needle in and draw back. So I always fill this with air and then you can see the needle right there that's gonna go inside of it. And then I push in here and then I push all the extra air in and then I'm going to pull back and it's going to suck all the insulin out of that vial into this tube right here. And it's just about done. And I pull a little bit past because we're going to have to shoot a little bit the, the bubbles out. So right there, you can see that's three mLs, and three mLs translates to 300 units, which I use about 300 units for three days. Sometimes I can make it last to four, depending on my diet, but I average 100 units a day. So this will only, this whole change will only last me about three days, and in three days I'll do it again. So there's little air bubbles in there, so I'm just gonna flick them out and make them all go to the top, and then I'm gonna push until I see insulin come out the top. Perfect. And I'm gonna put this cap on. This ain't never to recap your needle, but it's okay. I'm a seasoned pro at this point. So, and this is the T Slim G4 3 ml cartridge. So all of this in here can only fit in here. So I'm gonna open that up. And there's a little stopper right there, that little white stopper. So I'm going to take this that we just filled with insulin, and I'm going to put the needle into the white stopper. It's like a little rubber stopper. And I'm going to push all of that insulin into this cartridge. Now we have the um, site itself, which is what you just saw me take out. It has the 23 inch cord right here that connects. And so I'm going to take this protector off of this one. And there's a little tiny needle in that one. And I'm going to hook it into the connector. And then it, this one also has a lure lock. So here's this one attached to the 23 inch string. And then here's the cartridge. And I'm gonna twist these lure locks into each other and twist and make sure that they are connected and really secure because if not, they can come disconnected. You can think you're getting insulin and you're not. And before you know it, your blood sugar is in the 400s, maybe speaking from experience. You can see the cartridge in there. So I'm gonna push really hard and it's gonna pop out. And so I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna tell my pump change cartridges and then it's gonna prepare it for me. And so I'm gonna slide this new one in right here and I'm gonna say, okay, detect the cartridge. And then I'm gonna put my insulin while I'm waiting back in its box. It has to stay in the refrigerator. 
This one does not have to stay in the refriger refrigerator, obviously, because it's on my body. It's good for about five days, not in the refrigerator. So this says that the cartridge is changed. It's going to push all the insulin through this tube. It's going to get the air bubbles out. I'm going to make sure that there's no um, tears or kinks in the tubing. I'm going to make sure that the insulin comes out of the this little needle right there. That's the needle that you saw me take out of my body earlier. I'm going to make sure the insulin comes through and that there's no leaking in my connector. I can see the insulin through right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bubble of it and there hasn't been any leaking, so I know I'm good to go. Okay, so I just took the other one out of this side of my tummy. <clears throat> so in order to get evenly distributed insulin and not to get buildup of insulin and then to form balls and so that it's easily distributed, I'm going to put the next one in here. So here is an alcohol prep pad and I'm just going to rub it in a circle over where I think I might put it in and then it's going to dry. This right here is the needle and I'm going to take the protective covering off of it and then it has little two adhesives right here and I'm going to pull each of them off and then pull this back kind of like a butterfly to where it's just the needle and I'm going to pinch my skin and then I just push it in and then I push the adhesives down and then I do what they call is a pigtail loop and so that if this was to get pulled which you had seen on the one that was on this side of my body did get pulled so if it did get pulled it would have some slack and it wouldn't just pull my needle out immediately so I'm going to loop this into a pigtail and pull the adhesive off of it and then I'm going to stick it on that's it for the insulin site change um, obviously it's not a sterile procedure. I did it right here on my bed. This next part is my least favorite part. It is by far the most painful, but it's the coolest, if you will, um, device that I have. They have come out with some amazing technology that has truly saved lives. Um, this has saved mine numerous times. I don't know what I would do without it. It is the CGM, which stands for the Continuous Glucose Monitor. It goes on my arm. I have one on my left arm right now, which the left arm is the easiest to put in because I'm right-handed. This doesn't have a needle in it. It has more of like a catheter type thing, and it only lasts for seven days, but it doesn't technically give me any medication, so sometimes I can make it last longer. If it's still accurately reading my blood sugars, because it sends my blood sugars to my insulin pump every three minutes. The insulin pump will say, hey, Reagan, you're high, you need to do something, or you're low, you need to eat something before you have a seizure. And so that has really, like it's woke me up in the middle of the night before. If I'm in the middle of a run, it'll alert me like, hey, you need to go back and you need to check and make sure that this is accurate and all those things. So it's really nice. Um, and if it's still reading accurately, these are really expensive. So if it's still reading accurately, then I'm gonna keep using it. So here's the one that's in me right now. You can see it's kind of frailing up. It, this one lasted 15 or 16 days. I know it lasted longer than two weeks. This one I don't have to be as gentle at. I can just pull it right off and you can see that it's going to leave some adhesive, adhesive marks, um, which will take several days to come off since it's been on for so long. Left arm is my favorite, but I can't put one on top of that. I will have skin integrity and I'll have skin breakdown on it. So my next one's going to go in my right arm. For the CGM change, I'm going to need, obviously, the CGM the sensor installer. Um, this is SkinTac, my saving grace liquid adhesive, some alcohol prep again, and then alcohol. When I first started using my CGM, it would come off so fast. Like within five or six days, I wasn't even meet meeting the required or the recommended seven days. And I was like, what the heck? So I found this amazing stuff, which you don't even need a prescription for, which all this other stuff I do. But this I um, found on Amazon. It is the stickiest freaking stuff ever, but that's how I'm able to make this last for 14 days, which in the end saves me money. But I always put my CGM in my arm because I already have an insulin pump in my stomach. Well, just like the alcohol prep, I will rub this all around my arm where I think I might be putting it. And then you can see where it's gone on. So it's going to take a minute because it's so sticky. It's going to take a minute to get tacky. We don't want it dry, but we don't want it wet. I just want it tacky. So this is what this used to be. So I'm going to take the old one out right here. It has little tabs, and I'm going to pull them apart. And then that pops off. This isn't reusable, unfortunately, so I'm going to put this right here. So this, I don't know if you can see, this has a protector. So I'm going to take this protector out. Remember, we're still waiting on this to dry a little bit. 
And this has a needle, and it's the longest <laughs> needle. I mean, it's obviously not the longest ever, but it comes out. You can see it come out there. But that isn't just right there. That is all the way through from right here to right there. So, I mean, it's like, it's a bigger needle for sure. So, um, that's going to come all the way through. And you can't really tell right here, but there's like a catheter type thing on the edge. So, this needle is going to poke through and we're going to get the placement and the catheter is going to go through with it. Then the needle is going to pull out and the catheter end, which is the end we saw, we see on here. That end is going to stay in there and at the tip of that end are little sensors that's going to check my blood sugar. So I'm going to pull this adhesive off of here. And they already have this one kind of butterflied out. So I don't have to do it as much. But this one sucks and it's so painful and I'm just not a fan. Okay, so I'm just going to put it somewhere good on my arm. And I'm just going to push it down. Just kind of have to bite the bullet and just make it happen. So I'm going to push it down all the way. And then I'm going to put the pull the adhesives down. This is really hard to do without an extra person. But if you have an extra person, it's also really hard to explain to somebody else how to use this who is not familiar with it or has never done it themselves. I'm going to pull the needle back because the needle is in my arm right now. And I'm going to pull it back. Well, now the tricky part is I have to get this giant thing off of my arm by myself. And those same tabs that you saw me pull with two hands to get the sensor out, I have to do with my undominant hand, which is why I normally like to put it in my left arm. So with my undominant hand, I'm going to try and pull both of these tabs, which is easier said than done. Did I get it? Got it! A. Hey. So this is what it looks like. I still have a little piece right there. I'm gonna slide this in here right here. And with that tab, I'm gonna push down so you hear the two clicks. And then I'm gonna twist it off. And then I'm hands free. what it looks like after I have finished my site and my CGM. So I hope that helped understand a little bit of what I do. Um, I'm gonna tell my pump right now, hey, I put in a new CGM. You need to talk to it, see what's going on. In three hours, it's going to ask me to calibrate it. And so whenever I do that, I'm going to take two blood sugars on two different fingers on each hand. So I'm going to choose a finger on this hand and a finger on this hand. And I'm going to say, hey, this hand told me that my blood sugar was this much. And this hand told me that it was this much. And whenever I tell it that information, it's going to... Um, it's going to calibrate it and then from then on it's going to know my blood sugars and every 12 hours after that I'm going to and add the test and calibrate it some more but it sounds like a lot but without this um without having the CGM in and without having it calibrated I would have to check my blood sugar seven sometimes 15 times a day so to check it twice a day just to make sure that what's already checking it is accurate is a walk in the park and so if I go low in the middle of the night tonight it's going to alert me it'll vibrate once and then it'll have an alarm and it'll just get louder and louder and it will alert me and say, hey, you're low or hey, you're high. And so just to have that peace of mind is really nice. Um, also, it helps me keep my blood sugars on target because I'm going to see a constant graph now on my insulin pump with my CGM in. It's going to say, hey, you're trending upwards. This is your blood sugar. This is where it's going. And I'm going to say, hold up. Let's give some insulin and make it go back down or vice versa with a low blood sugar. And I can see the trends from here on until this this sensor and I'm very thankful where technology has come because whenever I first got diabetes almost 12 years ago this was not where we were it is a lot it's expensive and sometimes it's painful but you know what it's what I have to do to survive and I'm thankful to have what I do have to um to make me to try and get as healthy as I can as a diabetic so this is how I change my site and my CGM I hope that answered any questions if not Always feel free to ask. I would rather people be educated, especially on the difference of type 1 and type 2. Um, I have type 1 diabetes. I was diagnosed in 2007 um, whenever I was 11 years old. So I've had it for a while. Um, unfortunately, there's no cure for type 1 diabetes. My pancreas simply makes no insulin at all. So this is me do providing insulin for myself that my pancreas has neglected. It's a little bit of a slacker and it's neglected to give me. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a how to. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I think I covered it all. If not, holla at your girl. I'll be more, I would rather you ask questions than just assume. Like the Terminator or like, 
a robot of some kind, it's fine. <laughs>